We started off the game with a great kickoff return. Um, first play of the season. Um, everybody got all excited about that. Um, and I don't know whether or not that, that played into the rest of the game or not because it, you know, after nine seconds, you're up seven to nothing. Um, but you got 59 minutes and uh, left to play in the game. And uh, um, part of me thinks that, you know, the team might, uh, our team might have uh, thought it was going to be a little easier. And um, that may have uh, factored into uh, the rest of the ball game. Um, but we just did not play well. Um, and that's a little disappointing on our part as coaches. It's our responsibility to get the kids ready to play. We made way too many mistakes the rest of the ball game. We had four, 14 penalties, uh, we gave up seven sacks. Um, we had penalties at, um, uh, on third and long situations defensively that would have gotten us off the field. And, just a, uh, so many mistakes that, um, uh, that I attribute to training camp and, and not being able to hit during training camp because of injuries and um, all of those things added up to um, a game that we should have won, but we lost. It's all about adjusting, next man up. Uh, we didn't have Matt Barr going into week one, so Luke Brumbaugh stepped up. Uh, he scrambled and was uh, tackled onto his shoulder, so um, we had to bring in the next guy. The next guy was Andrew Romanchek, uh, and Andrew responded well. He's able to operate the offense, um, had command of what he was, uh, his responsibilities were, and it's always a tough deal because uh, in getting a guy's ready for that week, uh, that position always has the fewest reps. So I thought he did a good job uh, with to see how we move forward with who's healthy and and ready to play. But uh, I felt good about it from that standpoint, but got to try to make a few more plays. Uh, there were some plays out there and hopefully we'll learn from that and get better. I mean, you know, there aren't too many teams in, in NCAA football that have had uh, the quarterback problems that we've had um, the last two years in one game. Um, when you end up playing, um, you know, your third and your fourth uh, string quarterbacks, um, you really um, uh, have a difficult time offensively moving the ball um, because they just don't get the reps during camp and, and, and during the week that, that the starters get. Um, Matt Barr is still um, on, on the mend and, and we don't know whether or not he'll be ready for, for, um, for Dayton. We'll find out later this afternoon. Um, Luke Brumball is definitely out. Uh, we're hoping to get, um, you know, we're hoping to get Chase Bodeman back, um, and we're going to see which one. Either it's either going to be Chase Bodeman or Andrew Romanchek that starts against Dayton. And um, yesterday they both took the same number of reps, and we'll do that today again and see which one is ready to play. Uh, having a lot of young guys play for us, and then we had eight guys on offense playing for us uh, that were making their first you know, college appearance. So uh, obviously you got some growing pains anytime you play some young guys, but we're just looking at the rebound and keep working to get it better every, every day we can and keep trying to find the best 11 uh, possible to play and uh, help us get it going. This is one of the things, I mean, you, you learn fast. I mean, you get, like you said, you get thrown in the fire. Uh, you, it's kind of sink or swim. You better figure it out or um, you know, you're going to lose your job. And that's probably the biggest thing for those guys is they want to just make sure they're getting, we're just working to get them better each and every week. Um, again, the first time for them going from high school, you know, a lot of those guys are local guys that play for us here in Pittsburgh, which is luckily good competition here. So they play in a big game. So they're used to the big game atmosphere and being able to kind of step their game up, you know, in crunch time and all that. So, but obviously, like you said, first time bullets are flying, things are going crazy. Uh, it takes them a little bit to settle in, but once they did, uh, I thought we thought they did fine and we just had to keep working to get them ready to go and get better each week. Uh, there's really no time for anyone to take a step back uh, we're in the business of playing football, and if you're on the roster, you gotta, you're expected to know your job, go out and execute with urgency and detail, and be accountable to your teammates. And, and we believe they are, um, but it's a process, and um, you know they're working hard through it right now. So yeah, it's fun to see those freshmen go out 
and learn and learn on the job. But uh, hey, that's the situation. So no one's making excuses. No one's backing down. Everybody's full steam ahead. And as we said, the University of Dayton, they're up next. Still working on the fundamentals. I mean, it's all about blocking. Uh, it's all about the right release, getting to your depth, um, ball handling, uh, drops by the quarterback, uh, technique and pass protection, working on all the communication from play to play. So it's business as usual. I mean, it's just the next step. Next step is Dayton. Uh, they they uh, present another, um, I should say, uh, a level of uh, obstacles that you have to try to negotiate. They're a very good team. They're a solid team. They're a veteran team. Uh, I believe they have eight seniors on the starting defensive unit. They've got a redshirt junior, redshirt sophomore, and a true sophomore. So, um, and they played that scheme for years. They play it well. It's a very well coached team. It always has been. I've played them since, uh, see, first time I played them was 1997. And uh, it's almost like you can take the names of the players and change them. But, uh, the product is the same, and it's a very good one. Uh, they're always contenders. Last year, they made it to the one double A playoffs. Uh, very disciplined team, and um, yeah, we have our work cut out for us. That's for sure. But we're excited about the challenge, especially in the field goal, extra point field goal situation. Uh, we've gone live um, just to uh, make sure that um, we get that thing all fixed, um, and I think we have. Um, heading into Dayton, obviously, we've told the team that they're a much better football team than the opponent the week before. Um, I think our veteran leadership um, uh, understands that. And, um, and we've got two more practices here uh, today and tomorrow to polish things up and, and go, to, go out to Dayton and, and improve as a football team. And I think that's the goal that uh, myself and the coaches are looking for, uh, is to go out there and play much better than we played last week and um, see whether or not that's good enough to, to play against an experienced Dayton team that went to the NCAA playoffs a year ago. I know the guys are excited. It's nice we get uh, Blake Shambles back, who's one of our uh, upperclassmen leaders up, up front. So he's been helping push our guys and get them ready to go and bounce back. And, you know, you look at the history books with us versus Dayton. Last year was a close game. I'm telling my guys, especially receivers, you know, as a whole, we had eight drops. So it's been a little extra juice, extra, extra motivating factor for us that you know, I tell them, hey, you're the reason we lost the game last year, just kind of giving them that extra, extra edge. So I've been just harping on doing the job right, doing everything we need to, being detailed and uh, working to get better. So that's really what we're trying to do is continue to get better and improve and um, go from there. You know, my comments to our, our, our upperclassmen, our leadership, our captains, um, after Thursday night was, you know, we have to build um, between now and the next four weeks, um, we have to develop into a, a better football team. Uh, we have to improve on a, uh, on a weekly basis against some um, uh, very difficult opponents starting this week with Dayton and then we go to Youngstown State. Um, and we come home in Malone, but then we turn around and go on the road again very quickly down to Liberty and, you know, we're going to play three top 25 teams in the, in the next four weeks. Um, that's an opportunity for us to uh, to improve and to see where we are heading into homecoming in St. Francis where you know, we really start the season zero and zero and, um, and see whether or not we can challenge and fight for, um, for some conference victories.